This is Hussein Shakani from Ultrasonic Advisors. Today we're going to be showing how an Arduino, which is the most popular hobbyist microcontroller platform, can be used to generate ultrasonic frequencies. And when we say ultrasonic, what we mean is 20 kilohertz and above. We're going to be showing that an Arduino can generate up to 1.4 megahertz. Uh, we have on the Arduinos uh, a 16 megahertz uh, clock frequency, but basically because of the time it takes to toggle IO, digital I.O. pins, we can generate up to 1.4 megahertz which is quite useful in different applications many times however we're going to be working with 40 kilohertz which is also a very achievable uh, of a frequency for an arduino if you know what commands to use so let's go ahead and take a look at our setup all right this is the way an arduino is set up we have digital pin 2 and ground uh, we have this connected to a 1x oscilloscope probe. And here we have this ground connected to the ground terminal of that probe. So we'll, essentially we have the probe and it's going back to a picoscope. Which is a USB oscilloscope. And I'll be using that program as well. This is a setup of the Arduino Nano where we have digital output 2, the IO pin 2, and ground connected to a USB oscilloscope, which is a Picoscope 2000 series, specifically 2405A. That's the one I use with four channels. So we'll go over now to our Arduino IDE. And we have here the enabling of pin 2 as an output. Then we're going we're gonna to ignore this part right here. Uh, it's obviously common to dot code, which I'll be getting into later. But we'll go over the easiest way to generate, again, an ultrasonic frequency from an Arduino. So we have the simple function tone, which oftentimes it's used to exactly power a buzzer or a piezoelectric buzzer that is. So we'll have pin 2 enabled and we'll use a frequency of 1000 Hertz. This is obviously not ultrasonic but it's going to be used for demonstration purposes. We'll provide the auto setup function and we have here a 1 kilohertz signal as you can see from the bottom. So what is, so in this waveform, again, it's, you know, half of it, this is a half a millisecond. Each, each area, as you see here, 400, 500 microseconds, and an entire cycle is now one millisecond. That, that makes an average of a hertz. Now let's see if we can provide 10,000 hertz. Something you're typically not going to be driving a buzzer with. Now we'll find, we'll put an auto scale again, that there is 10 kilohertz. So let's try 40, which is one of our golden numbers, because a lot of devices go at that frequency. And we have 40 kilohertz here. Uh, on an average of 25 cycles measured, we have a distribution of about... 5 hertz, a standard deviation of 5 hertz and about 40.02 kilohertz, it would be a decent signal, a way to generate uh, 40 kilohertz. As you see, there is some jitter in these uh, results, but overall, it can, it can definitely be used for your transducer as your transducer will reject all non-resonant modes. Now let's investigate a different way of approaching this problem. But it's going to be especially important when we directly go to write to the to the channel. So you can write digital write channel two high digital write 
channel to low. And this is just directly turning on and off the uh, uh, pin 2, which is probably going to be about the fastest you can get uh, while using the higher level language that the Arduino uh, uh, code provides. And you're obviously got to put that thing there, semicolon. And this is going to provide a frequency of 150 kilohertz. And the jitter is actually quite small. It's about 6 hertz. Uh, and that's because I dis disable interrupt. Um, our tone. What happens when you put 140 here? Can we put any arbitrary number? As you're probably going to guess, you can. And there's going to be a certain limit. Um, and no, it doesn't do that at all. In fact, when you put a high frequency, now you're getting 8 kilohertz. 8.9. So there's actually a functional limit if you over you could say clock the time the tone command you will actually end up getting lower and low frequencies uh, due to probably the way that function was coded uh, it works about up to 60 kilohertz then you will be running into issues so 60 kilohertz works it's the maximum uh, but any more than that is not going to uh, yield you the right results Another thing to note here, so we typed in 40 kilohertz, right? And sometimes we want to adjust our frequency in a fine way. As we saw earlier, we get a pretty good output here. Uh, and I'm going to let this saturate. So 40.02 kilohertz is what we receive. But if I put 40.1, what's going to happen? 40.1 kilohertz. We still get a, free, we got a frequency of 40.23. So there is actually... A, a two two. There's actually a minimum uh, step size here dictated by the clock frequency and the way the program is coded. You don't have infinite frequency resolution. In this case, you have about 200 hertz of resolution at 40 kilohertz. So if you put in 40.2, it's going to be the same exact value. It'll be still be 40.22 as the average of 25 collected waveforms. Yep, 40.22. So we have that basically discretized uh, uh, frequency step. As you go higher and higher in frequency, the, the, the steps will be larger and larger. But as you go lower and lower in frequency due to uh, the division uh, in clock cycles, which occurs from the 16 megahertz uh, clock signal, that division will then allow you to be very... For example, you could tell the difference between 150 and, and 200 hertz. So let's say 1500... 1.5 kilohertz. It's really the, the, the time that you're incrementing. Uh, the resolution of, of the period becomes more demanding. So it's one point. And this is just an example that we can change it by 50. Yeah, 1.554. So actually you can change it to a smaller amount when you're using a larger period, which is a lower frequency here. Uh, so I mentioned that we found this method here of digital write. It allowed us to get up to, oh boy. Uh, it allowed us to get up to 148, 7 kilohertz. And you see here, there is a standard deviation of w almost 1 kilohertz. But if we enable, if we disable interrupts, with this, we end up reducing that number significantly to 6 hertz. Um, you can't quite see it because of the, uh, the size. I'll make that a little smaller. It's actually 5 millihertz. It becomes extremely small at that point. It's from 1 megahertz to 5 millihertz. That's, uh, that's uh, no interrupts is here. So we can put delays on purpose. Delay microseconds because we're, gonna, we're trying to be precise here. And if you put 1 microsecond, it's not going to work. Because there is you know, some internal workings that how all the timing works. And if you put 1 microsecond delay, you're not going to get it. And it has to do with the clock frequency, and you can read different 48 kilohertz. And we're going to be getting that similar value now here. So it's still 148 is where you start to put two, two microseconds. And then it jumps down to 121. So it jumped on 20 kilohertz. Whereas before you saw we had about 200 hertz steps um, at 40 kilohertz. Actually go to put 11 in, which I believe 11 corresponds, or it's pretty close to uh, 40 kilohertz. I mean, let's just try that out. What would 11 do? I'm looking at these numbers down here for frequency. Yeah, it's about 38.11 kilohertz. 
And if you change it to 10, which makes the frequency, the period smaller, so from 38 kilohertz to, wait for it to initialize, 41.26. So it's about 3 kilohertz difference uh, in the resolution you're getting from the microsecond delay. So now let's really pump it up, really amp it up as fast as this Arduino can let us go. And in order to do that, you can't use these higher level commands like tone or delay microseconds, although tone is really convenient and it provides a beautiful 40 kilohertz signal. Um, we can use these low level commands that I found online. Um, it basically toggles the ports as fast as possible. So I'm just going to leave that there. I'll leave this here. This is the fastest lower level, lowest level switch that we can command and we can program using the Arduino IDE. So I provided this function here that uh, clears the digital pin 2 and this one sets it high. So we see and we go in here, but when you start messing with lower level stuff, see we have a frequency of 2 megahertz which is a fraction of 16 megahertz clock signal, so we can say that. The off cycle is about three times shorter than the on than the time it takes to turn on. So it must take a, a, a it must be able to switch from uh the time it takes to switch is different between turning this turning the channel off and turning the channel off. Basically by putting two more off cycles, by making the off time more, we can even it out. And this basically divides the frequency by two. And now we have about a 50% duty cycle approximately. And I can actually add a measurement. I believe there's a measurement for duty cycle. About 50% at this point. So now what if we want to uh, alter our frequency even further and reduce it? Well, we can add extra commands here. These are basically, this, this command here just takes one clock cycle. Delay the time it, it takes to start the next command to turn off or, or on that digital pin. So we have 1.3 meg. Uh, I'm going to put these two commands in. These are just, again, these are, these are filler commands. They just will take one clock cycle so we can have a very precise and we're going to end up with exactly one megahertz to come up with exactly one megahertz signal from an Arduino, uh, especially specifically an Arduino Nano here. And you can imagine now we have a very incremental change. We changed from, we're using four extra commands here. We changed, you know, four megahertz. 0.4 megahertz. So we're we're really able to control, and when you get into 40 kilohertz range, you'll be really e easily able to control the um, on and off time. So let's be clever. If, if we want to reduce, uh, we can just say let's just add a wait delay microseconds. Well, let's say 10. Yep, we need that there. Ten. Now let's see what happens. So we added a delay. Obviously, these are much smaller than the delay. And when you are not... So these three commands are as fast as this one, but when we're getting into 10 microsecond delays, it doesn't matter anymore. Let's set that one straight. This is a 54 kilohertz signal, 54.08 patients so repeatable in this case. So what we could do, let's let's dial in a little bit more. And let's set a 40.88. Okay, so right now I'm actually trying to get to 40, and I'm I want to see at 40 kilohertz. Let's do 13. At 40 kilohertz, what what options do I have for, um, you know, what's the finest frequency resolution I can get? If I really get into clock cycles. Um, so this is 39.23. We'll mark that down. So if we then kill these. Uh, 
Oops, this is uh, actually, let's do 14. That was a mistake. So we are going to be at 38.11 kilohertz with a really small standard deviation, 38.11. And we'll add these now. And obviously, whenever you add one, you have to have another in order to maintain a 50% duty cycle. And now we're at 37.75. So 37. I'm just going to write that down so I don't forget. 37.76 uh, kilohertz, and that's the full range. And if we, again, if we take these out, Thirty-eight point one one. Thirty-eight point one one. So, really, we have again still about four hundred hertz, which was about what we had before. So, this going lower level here didn't really seem to benefit us. Now, let's see what what the minimum amount is. And this is with four extra cycles, 37.93. So I think we had about that 200 hertz resolution before at 40 kilohertz, 222 or uh, 200 hertz. So this is about what we have again. We don't really have anything better from using this lower level command versus tone, which is really, uh, which is good to know. Uh, that's uh, that's the amount of time uh, the clock cycle will run, and, and that's the, the frequency resolution you're going to be limited to. Um, and those two clock cycles were about um, they should be 16 megahertz. So just that you know you do that division and you get these. Uh, uh, so again, at 40 kilohertz, we're limited to 200 hertz, which isn't bad for many applications. Uh, at higher frequencies. So if we go to our uh, um, plot here, so at high frequencies, we're going to be limited in what we can do with our piezo. Because generally, if you're just talking about a piezo from the perspective that it's a capacitor, well, if you look at your impedance, it'll decrease as frequency increases, so you'll need more current. Uh, and Arduino can sort of only output 40 milliamps, so you're not going to be able to drive it directly. But the signal from your, uh, you know, your Arduino coming out from this pin right here, you know, the signal coming out is going to be able to drive another you could drive an op amp or another amplifier or if if you're at 40 kilohertz you may be able to directly drive a bjt or a mosfet at that frequency and that could be uh and that would be sufficient to to work with there so let's let's sort of recap what was discussed the the, the what was discussed was tone that's the easiest method to generate frequency. Uh, the next easiest method is just digital write. But you, but with with digital write, you shouldn't use um, uh, you should use delay microseconds and also turn off interrupts. Uh, the final thing I want to mention is. If for the fastest or highest frequency, use low level um, commands to your uh, Arduino. And also be careful about high frequency. So you wouldn't, again, you wouldn't use your Arduino to directly drive a buzzer. Typically, if you want any large level of sound or, or, or a piezoelectric actuator, you'd be then using that to uh, drive a BJT or a MOSFET directly or indirectly through a buffer uh, IC or, or a buffer circuit, which can provide the correct amount of current. But 
uh, I hope this video was useful in understanding how to generate high frequency, that it's possible, that it's accurate, um, you know, as verified by an external oscilloscope. And if, the main takeaway, I think, is 40 kilohertz. We have plus or minus 200 hertz resolution. So if that's useful, then uh, our drive, driving from Arduino directly would be useful. Uh, also, we can generate up to two, 1 megahertz, I think, is, is pretty uh, good. We can generate up to 1 megahertz using lower level commands. And additionally, if you want fast, finer resolution, you need a higher clock frequency of, of your, of your or higher clock frequency. And a standard... Um, accessible microcontroller platform is the TNC platform and those um, uh, the, the frequency on those and they're very similar to Arduino they use they can use a similar similar code those goals can, can go up to I think 160 megahertz or so that would get you um, 10 times better uh, resolution than that so you basically instead of 40 kilohertz you might have 20 hertz. Uh, that would be very uh, impressive for just a straight um, mark. There are other ways of generating uh, of generating frequency. If you use a filtering filtering method, you could extract the higher frequency content from those square waves. Higher frequency content from square waves. Uh, break. All right, higher frequency content from your square waves. Uh, you could also uh, use a numerically controlled oscillator, which you know converts voltage into uh, frequency, uh, and that you can use a digital. So you can use a analog output output to control using that but it would be another component it would have require its own power source and, and and wiring so if you can get away with using an arduino or directly driving from a microcontroller do so if you can't then well you don't really have a choice uh numerically controlled output is a is is a useful method um so i hope this covers the uh, um you know, generating frequency from Arduino. This is pretty exciting that you can just use Arduino directly. Uh, if this video is useful, please let me know. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, leave comments. I check those. You can also contact me. There's some further information about how to contact me in other videos in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.